Hello guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be exploring the uh, U.S. House elections in 2024, uh, the Republican path to victory. Uh, so, we already, I already filled out all the competitive districts here, uh, from all the states that will have competitive districts. Uh, so let's actually start off with the state of Alaska here. So we have Mary Peltola, uh, who is running for re-election, most likely. Let me just actually put this here. So, Alaska. Uh, Mary Peltola is running here. Uh, she is an incumbent. Uh, she is portrayed herself as a moderate, and this is a Trump plus 10 seat. However, uh, this seat is very left trending, and uh, this might, this might uh, be, this could be a flip for Republicans if they nominate a good candidate, like a moderate, like maybe somebody like Lisa Murkowski, like a Lisa Murkowski type candidate. Maybe they could flip it, but uh, for now, I have this as leans Democratic. Uh, let's go to Arizona, where there's two competitive districts. So this first district here, um, David Schwickert. Uh David Schwickert, he is uh, running for re-election here in this uh, heavily left-trending okay. district. I have it like if Republicans want to win, then they have to flip. They have to keep this district. They have to hold it. This is going to be a very tough district to to maintain. But uh, if he fights hard enough, he can win this district. This district went for the went narrowly for him. In the last election where Mark Kelly and Katie Hobbs were both on the ballot, they both outperformed Joe Biden in this state, uh, in Maricopa County. So uh, in this in this seat over here, um, if Biden underperforms them in Maricopa County, then there's definitely a good chance for him to win re-election by a like, uh, lean to likely margin. Uh, the 6th District here, I mean, there's pretty much nothing to say. Juan Siscomani is an okay incumbent. He'll probably hold on here. Let's go to California, where there's six districts. So this 13th district here, I have it as lean Democratic. This seat is going to flip no matter what, most likely. Uh, John Duarte, the incumbent, he portrayed himself as a moderate, but I mean, I don't think that's enough to win re-election in a Biden plus what, 13 seat? It's a no, Biden plus 11 seat. This is way too much of a hill to climb for him. Uh, he could definitely win if he, if he pulls out the David Valadeo and just goes full moderate, but for now I have this as a leans Democratic flip. Um, the 22nd district here, uh, David Valadeo needs to hold on. I mean, he's pretty well known in his district and he's a pretty popular incumbent. Uh, the 27th district also needs to go leans Democratic. Uh, Calvert needs to go, I mean, not leans Democratic, leans Republican. Ken Calvert needs to win re election. Same thing as, uh, as Mich Michelle. Steele over here. Is this this one right here? Yeah, Michelle Steele. This okay. I gotta actually go here first. Uh, Michelle Steele here. Yeah. Which seat did I click? I don't see which seat. Yeah, Luke Correa. Hold up. I gotta fix this here. This seat right here. Where is it? Right there. Okay. Yeah. And these seats are actually so tiny. Uh. Katie Porter here. Katie Porter, uh, she's running for Senate, and this is a heavily left-trending district here. Um, there, if Republicans run someone like maybe like uh like like the like I don't know like an extremely moderate person, then they could have a chance of flipping this. But I mean, this is gonna probably go by a likely margin. It's gonna go probably more than in 2022, uh, because Republicans actually outperformed uh, Donald Trump by a lot in California in 2022. This election with Donald Trump on the ballot is gonna hurt Republicans here. And so I have this as a likely Democratic seat. Uh, let's go to Colorado, where we have two seats. Uh, this seat over here, uh, Jed Yadira Caravale, is a heavily left-trending district. It went Democratic um, in a in an environment where Jared Polis won by 20 points, and um, uh, Joe O'Dale was on the ballot, and he absolutely destroyed um, Republicans' chances here. Uh, so this seat could definitely be in play. Barbara Kirkmeyer. Kirkmeyer uh, runs for this district again by some. This is Lean Democratic because uh, uh, Caraveo is the incumbent. This district here, Bobert seat, is going to stay Republican. People are saying, oh, it's going to flip Adam Frisch, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not going to flip. This is a Trump plus eight seat. And Donald Trump will probably win it by a smaller margin, maybe like six points, five points. But um, Bobert will hold on. Uh, 2022 was honestly just a fluke. Uh, let's go to Connecticut here. This district here probably leans Democratic. Uh, Republicans need to run a really good candidate here if they want to win it, but I don't see it. Delaware, uh, nothing here. Florida, nothing much here. I mean, Paulina Luna, 
Anna Paulina Luna probably could be a lean margin. I'm going to put leave it as likely for now, but it could get into a lean margin. Georgia, nothing really very competitive. Uh, Illinois, okay, we have one seat here. This is Eric Sorensen. Uh, this seat, I believe he'll win by, by a lean margin. Indiana, uh, Frank, Mer Frank Mervin probably wins by a likely margin. Uh, Iowa, this seat, Republicans need to win. This seat, Zach Nunn seat, they need to win it. Uh, he's an incumbent now. He's a pretty good incumbent in a, I believe it's a tie district. Uh, I, I believe Donald Trump won it by what? Yeah, 0.3%. If Donald Trump improves in Iowa, he, uh, Zach Dunn could definitely win by a lean to likely margin here. Uh, let's go to Kansas. Uh, I'm going to put this seat as likely right now. Actually, Jake Letourneau, they could get it to likely uh, because uh, Trump will probably underperform uh, Republicans in 2022 in Kansas. I know that Democrats won the governorship there, but I mean, if you look at the Senate race, Republicans won it by 20 points. Uh, Donald Trump only won the state by 14 points, 14.9 points. So uh, this seat can definitely be in play. Uh, Kentucky, nothing in Kentucky. Uh, Louisiana, uh, they, I'm going to actually put the, uh, a district here as, as a Democrat seat because of the court of the this lawsuit here. Uh, I think Alabama actually has one as well. Yeah, I'm going to put one of them as safe Democratic as well because of the lawsuits. Uh, let's go to Maine where we have this district here. This will lean Democratic. Uh, Jared Golden is actually probably one of the most honest politicians in the Democrat Party. He is an actual moderate, like unlike the other moderates, he actually votes kind of moderately, like for like a moderate voting record. Uh, this seat over here probably likely likely Democratic. Uh, Andy Harris probably wins likely by a likely margin. Massachusetts, nothing here. Let's see, Michigan. Okay, Michigan. We have three seats now. This. This state is going to be really, really interesting. And I do believe that uh, Hillary Schulten will win by a lean margin now. Uh, because, again, like this is a a uh, Republican like, – Michi the Republicans are going to do better in Michigan for sure the next election. I mean, you're watching Whitmer won by 11 points. Biden's not winning the state by 11 points. Uh, probably neither is, is, uh, is Alyssa Slotkin uh, in the, that Senate race. She'll probably win by just under a lean margin. Uh, I still have this seat over here going le uh, likely. Uh, this is uh, Hazenga, probably likely margin. Um, okay, so the eighth district here, uh, Dan Kildee is a pretty good incumbent. I'm going to say that he wins by a lean margin. Uh, Alyssa Slotkin, so this seat over here, where's Alyssa Slotkin? This seat, this seat is definitely in play for Republicans here. Alyssa Slotkin is retiring, and she is a very good incumbent. But with with her retiring, this could definitely be a play for Republicans. I'm not saying that that Republicans are guaranteed to flip it, but um, it, they have a pretty good chance. And if they want to win the House, they always have to flip this seat here, Alyssa Slotkin's seat. Alyssa Slotkin not I mean Alyssa Slotkin not being on the ballot could definitely help them. Uh, John James here. John James probably wins by a lean margin. He's an incumbent now. He's a good incumbent. Uh, let's see what else. Minnesota. Okay, Minnesota. This seat over here probably wins by a likely margin. Probably wins it by a likely margin. Uh, and Angie Craig. I mean, yeah, they're gonna win it by a likely margin. And this seat will be a li likely margin for Republicans. Uh, Mississippi. Nothing here. Missouri. Yeah, this seat. This seat will be likely, but not really very competitive. Montana. Uh, I do have Ryan Zinke winning as by a lean margin. Uh, John Tester will be on the ballot though, which could hurt him here, but uh, he's an incumbent now. Uh, he'll probably win it by maybe three or four points, maybe two, at least two. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nebraska. Don Bacon. Don Bacon needs to fight for his life. This is a, like, along with uh, David Schwaker, Don Bacon needs to fight for his life here if he wants to win this seat here. This seat is very left trending. Uh, it is in the Omaha area. This is a seat that I believe Biden will probably win by uh, maybe three points. It's, I believe it's been re redistricted, so uh, definitely this seat is in play for Democrats. Uh, but if Republicans want to win the House, they're going to have to keep this district here. Uh, well, let's see, not Nebraska. Nevada, uh, this seat's going Democrat. I don't care what people say, it's not going Republican. Uh, New Hampshire, these seats pretty – you could even put this as safe. I'm going to – I don't even know. 
You can even put this and custard seed as safe. I'm gonna put it as safe for now. Uh, this, this is going through the 15 plus uh, scale here for safe. Uh, New Jersey. This seat has a uh, Tom Keen, who is a the son of Tom Tom Keen, uh, the governor, the former governor, very popular, well known governor. Uh, his, I think his name will definitely help him here, and since he's the incumbent, he'll probably win by a lean margin. Uh, let's see, New Mexico, this seat is not going to flip. I don't care what people say. Uh, Yevick Harrell, she's not going to win this seat. I'm, I'm sorry, but she's not going to. Um, the only way I can see this flipping is if maybe that Senate race gets hotly contested by, I don't know, somebody like moderate Republican. But you see, if it flips, then that Republican definitely win the House, but I'm not saying it will. Uh, New York, New York is going to be probably the deciding state of this election. There are one, two, three, four, five, six competitive districts here. You could even put seven, uh, considering that the, they might redistrict the the, uh, the, 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 court, the map. So let's start with the 22nd district here. Uh, we uh, This is Brandon Williams. Uh, he is a pretty Trumpian Republican in this uh, pretty Democrat district. This is a Democrat district. It has, uh, 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 it has one of those uh, big uh, upstate cities here, uh, Onondaga County. Uh, let me actually pull it up here. So, yeah, right here, Onondaga County over here. Uh, this seat, uh, it, I, I, don't, I don't think... I don't think Williams is going to hold on. He is not mo as moderate as John Katko. Uh, that could definitely hurt him here. And Trump probably d will most likely do but more, way worse than Lee Zeldin in upstate. So, uh, wait, why did I put it as, as – okay, yeah. Lean's Democrat. So this is going to be a flip. Uh, the 19th district, Molinaro probably holds on. He is a good incumbent. He outperformed in upstate New York when he ran for governor in 2018. Uh He'll, since he's the incumbent, he'll probably hold on. Uh, 18th District, Pat Ryan. I know people who live in this district here. Uh, they hate Pat Ryan, but, I mean, Republicans are bringing people good. The only way I could see this thing flipping is if somebody like, I don't know, like John Faso runs for this seat again. But he wouldn't, so I'm going to put this as a lean Democrat. 17th District, Michael Lawler. He's a really good incumbent. A lot of people like him up there. Uh, so, But he could win. He could definitely win here. Uh, this seat voted for Biden by what? Let me see. Ten points. He could probably pull the, the David Valadeo and win this seat here. I think Waller, if Republicans want to win, Waller, Lawler needs to win his seat here. Uh, he's going to have to pour a bunch of money into his campaign. Um, he's going to have to outperform Donald Trump in, in, uh, in Rockde Rockland County, Putnam County. Uh, that little bit of Westchester County that's here, he's going to have to flip Rockland County maybe by a likely margin. He's going to win this county by a likely margin. Uh, does it, it has – no, it doesn't have Orange County in there. It has a little bit of Dutchess County, but mainly he has to do good in Putnam County. He has to get this into a safe margin, which Donald Trump did in 2016. He's definitely going to have to put this into a safe margin here. So, uh, yeah, I have this going for him uh, by a lean margin if they want to win the House. Uh, George Santos. The only way Republicans can win this seat is they if is if they primary him out. Uh, George Santos, I mean, he's pretty based, but people don't like him, and I could see why. I'm gonna put this as lean Democratic, maybe even likely. I'll probably I'll probably even put it likely. I think that uh, what's the the guy's name? The guy's name, the senator uh, Thomas Swatsi. He'll probably run for this seat again. Uh, so I'm gonna put this as likely. And Anthony D. Esposito, pretty like low candidate. Like not many people know who this guy is. Um, he's a, he's the incumbent now. Uh, I don't even know like what her, his policy stance is here, but he's probably like a traditional conservative. I, he hasn't been very outspoken for Donald Trump, so that could help him a bit here. Um, he's going to have to fight really hard. Let me see what's the partisan lean of this. Uh, this is basically a solid Biden seat. Very solid Biden seat. Yeah. Um, what he has to do is he has to pour a lot of money into this race if he wants to win re-election. He has to pour a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money here. He's going to have to ask the RNC to give him like hordes of like, – like a whole entire vault full of cash to pour out ads and to knock on doors just to vote for this guy. 
Um, I don't really know how strong he is. He could be a strong candidate, but I'm going to put this as another uh, flip for the Democrats. Uh, just because it's a literal Biden plus 15 seat. So yeah, this is not going to, for him. Uh, North Carolina, this is where Republicans are going to do really good here because they're going to flip uh, these two seats here. Uh, these seats are going to be redistricted for uh, Republicans. Uh, these seats will both flip, which is really good for Republicans. If they want to win the House, they need to win these districts here. They need to win the, the redistricting case. Uh, the 13th district here, Wiley Nickel. Where's Wiley Nickel? Uh, the seat only voted for Democrats by 1.7%. I, I do think Trump will probably outperform his 2020 margin here. Uh, let me see. Uh, Mark Robinson's also running for this governorship, which could help Republicans. It's going to be close. Oh, I don't, I don't know about this one. I'm gonna put the first district as like lean Democrat. The third, the thirteenth is gonna be really hard for me. But if again, if Republicans want to win the House, they're going to have to flip this district here, and that already gives them the House. But let's actually go to uh, Ohio, where Ohio has three districts here. Uh, this district here probably even goes likely. I'm gonna put it as likely here. Uh, Greg Landsman will, will probably win it by a likely margin. Uh, Shabbat probably won't run here, so that will definitely help Democrats. The Marcy Captor seat, this will probably go leans. I know it went for Donald Trump, but Captor is a very strong incumbent here. Uh, Emilia Sykes, that this district definitely is in play for Republicans here. This district is trending Republican. This is in Akron, Ohio. Uh, if I can find Akron. Yeah, right here. This is Akron, Ohio, Summit, Ohio. Uh, it didn't trend. It actually trended right compared to the national environment here. It only trended 1% to the left compared to the three points in the popular vote. So this seat is definitely trending Republican. And also Trump is probably going to outperform in some of these uh, some of these uh, rural counties out here. Uh, so this is definitely in play for Republicans. They're going to have to probably nominate Matt. They shouldn't nominate Madison Jesiota Gilbert in this seat again. She, I feel like she'll run here, uh, but again, this is if Republicans want to maintain the House, and if so, they're going to have to flip this district. So, uh, Oklahoma, this seat probably goes likely. Well, like It's going to go likely. Oregon, this seat, Republicans, again, must, must keep over here. Uh, let's go to Pennsylvania, where there are three districts here. Uh, I believe that Perry wins by a lean margin. Also, Fitzpatrick wins by a lean margin. Uh, these districts are very left trending, so I'm going to put them as lean margins for now. The 17th district here, Chris Deluzio is going to run for re-election. I have this as a likely Democrat, and this is, I believe, it. it it's pretty left trending because a lot of it is in the Philly, uh, Philly suburbs here. I know that, like, the, the exurban suburbs here of Philly, I mean, not Philly, oh my god, I say Philly, uh, Pittsburgh, are trending Republican. Uh, let me find them right here. These stuff here are trending Republican. However, this Allegheny County is trending Democrat. And most, like, I would say the majority of the population is in the Pittsburgh suburbs. So I have this going likely Democrat. Uh, one of the flips, one of the must win flips for Republicans if they want to win the House is Matt Cartwright's seat. Matt Cartwright uh, has a pretty good shot of going down here. Uh, in 2022, despite John Fetterman and Josh Shapiro being on the ballot, uh, helping Democrats win those seats. And by the way, Josh Shapiro almost won that governorship by a, a safe margin. And considering how uh, how Matt Cartwright underperformed his 2020 margin with Trump on the ballot, I mean, that's unbelievable. This seat is definitely trending Republican, and if Republicans run a good person here, they can definitely flip it. Uh, Susan Wild. This is all going to come down to Northampton County, how much it goes Republican here. In 2016, it went for Donald Trump. In 2020, it narrowly went for Joe Biden. Donald Trump, if, like, I mean, if this seat wants to flip, he's going to have to do good in, what, Le 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 Lehigh County? Le I don't know how you pronounce it. But he's also going to have to do good in Carbon County. He needs to get that margin up in Carbon County, Northampton County, the little bit of Monroe County that's there. Uh, he's going to have to do really well here. Flabby flipped Mon Northampton County by three to four points if he wants to even have a chance of flipping this seat. But for now, I'm going to put it as a leans margin for the Democrats. 
uh, Rhode Island. Uh, there's this district here, Seth Maganizer. Probably wins by a likely margin. Nothing really here. I thought actually I thought Republicans were gonna flip that seat, but I guess they didn't. Uh, South Carolina, nothing to say here. Uh, Tennessee, nothing to say here. Texas, nothing to say here either. Yeah. Uh, Virginia. Okay, so we have. Honestly, I forgot to put this seat here also as competitive, and honestly, probably Rob Whitman's seat. Um, these three seats here are going to be pretty competitive. Abigail Spanberger. So let's actually see Abigail Spanberger. So Spanberger uh, won by uh, 4% in this seat right here. Uh, I think they lost because of Yesley Vega. Uh, she was not the best Republican. They could have nominated somebody better. She wasn't bad, but she wasn't really strong. Uh, I'm going to put it as lean Democratic. Uh, Rob Whitman needs to hold on uh, by a lead margin, at least by a lead margin. It could go to likely. Let's see, Rob Whitman. So you want by 6%. You want know, to put it as likely. I'll put it as likely. Uh, and Jen Kiggins needs to hold on as well. Uh, if Elaine Luria, Elaine Luria, the former representative runs here, then it could be really close. But uh, uh, she she's going to probably win Virginia Beach County. Uh, let's see. So Donald Trump probably loses Virginia Beach County, but she's going to make up ground here in a, a comic county, probably Northampton County as well. She's going to outperform uh, Donald Trump in these areas here. So I'm going to put it as a lean Republican. She's a pretty strong incumbent. Uh, Washington, uh, this seat, pro you could even put it as likely. Kim Schreier probably wins by a likely margin. Uh, this seat over here, okay, okay, this is going to be one of the Another must-flip seat for the Republicans, Mary Perez, claiming herself to be a moderate. She really isn't a moderate at all. Um, she claims herself to be a part of the Blue Dog Coalition. Uh, she actually – she wanted an upset against Joe Kent here. Uh, this seat definitely in play for Republicans. If, but again, it, this is a scenario if they want to win the House, they're going to have to flip this district here. Um, West Virginia, nothing here. Wisconsin, they're going to they're going to redistrict uh, this this state. Um, Republicans are tr really trying their best to maintain this map here, but uh, I do believe Democrats are going to redistrict Wisconsin, and it's not going to be too good for Republicans. So first of all, Brian Steele probably wins by a lean margin instead of likely. Also, Derek Van Orden probably loses his seat too, honestly, or even likely. I'll probably even put it as a likely. Uh, he might even lose his seat here. Uh, I'm just going based off of if the redistricting happens. If it doesn't happen, then he probably then Van Orden wins this by a lean margin, and Steele wins this by a likely by a likely margin. I'm gonna leave it like this here. I know I'll put this one as lean. I'll put it as lean. But it's gonna be a flip. Uh, Wyoming, no districts. So let's really quickly look at the map. So if Republicans want to win the House, of course they need to win the popular vote. Maybe, uh, or probably lose the popular vote by maybe half a, per a percent in the House generic ballot. Uh, I know Donald Trump probably 90% chance he will lose the popular vote, but um, Republicans are going to have to outperform Donald Trump in many of these areas here. Uh, definitely, uh, Republicans do have a shot of maintaining their House majority if Biden does bad uh, in the election. Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely, definitely not uh, am impossible for Republicans. Uh, so if you want me to show you a scenario where Democrats can, like a path for Democrats to win the House, please write it in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a like and subscribe and uh, give me like recommendations down below, any suggestions or anything that I should do in my next video. Again, school starting. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time.